All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises and glories unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Arachachodash, the belong to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, and greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the elect. Shalom unto you. All right. Your brother Shakwa from the Las Vegas Church. Just wanted to uh, touch up on this video because this is a topic uh, that must come around and uh, coming into the Today, uh, being the Shabbat, because of the new moon, is a great time to uh, go into it. Um, all right, so Shabbat Shalom. Um, basically, we're going to go into the calendar a little bit, okay? Because I mean, I'm sure there's still some Friday sundown, Saturday sundown people out there, you know, but the moon phases uh, tell you pretty much what it is, all right? And then even coming into the time that we're coming into, um, this uh makes sense if you will so or what is edifying um because it makes sense because you have to 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 know when the new moon is what you can look outside and uh and, and determine when the new moon is because you won't see the moon out there okay because it'll it'll be dark all right and that's why um when i took this screenshot uh this morning it said it gave me everything in the new moon, you know, the sunrise, the sunset. They gave you all of that. It even gave you how how old the moon is, or you know, uh, the the percentage of visibility at the bottom there was zero percent. The next full full moon and the next new moon. Well, now is the new moon, right? Yeah, coming in at even, all right. Then it gives you the next phases of the moons, which today. Uh, uh, um, then there'll be a quarter on the 10th, then it'll be, um, uh, uh, the 18th will be a full moon, which we know the, the prior evening is when it is. And that prior evening also is the Passover two weeks come in. I'll, I'll read all of that. And then the final quarter of the, of the is when the, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread ends and the p p Passover, I mean, uh, the, the, the new, uh, uh, Shabbat will be right then at that time as well. All right, so this just this is just an app that does that. Um, go to your Play Store, you can find Moon Phases app and all of that. Right. So um, also wait, that's not what I want. This is what I wanted. Also, this pretty much breaks it down for you the whole month right here. Okay. It gives you pretty much how to understand it. All right, the first was Tuesday of, of, of the of the Gregorian calendar month, but the new moon or the new month was on the second, the evening of the second. All right, which is which is today, Wednesday. Okay, and then it goes for uh, and you always go back to the previous uh, or the evening of that time. All right, all right, you see how, how it goes, so you count uh. Today's a new moon. Tomorrow's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Brings us back to Tuesday evening. All right. When it should be a, a week. But they have it marked the next day because of when it comes in. But when we observe it is uh, at the beginning of it. All right. Um, if it's before or after a certain time. And then you continue doing that all the way throughout the month. And then the new moon comes back in. Uh, on the 31st which would be like the first of april but it'll be you see or was it the 30th i, I don't remember any. i think it is the, the, the 31st but you can see right here how the moon cycles uh go around all right and even the passover coming in on the sabbath um of evening all right on the, the, that Wednesday, all right, two weeks from today, which will be the 17th, which will be the full moon, okay, and then that's when the Feast of Eleven Bread starts. All right, so without further ado, let me grab some uh, scriptures to back up uh, how to read this and what's going on. I'll start here in Leviticus 23, uh, verse 2, it says, uh, Speak unto... 
matter of fact, before I even get this one, let me go to Genesis. Genesis 1. Start up at like 10. I'll go a little further. 14 is the point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 114. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 says, And the Most High, well, you know, and, and the Alahayim said, for those that understand the Alahayim, is who actually put this in order. The Most High gave a blueprint, but the Alahayim put it together. Starting with that first Adam, first angel, the, the word, who is uh, Yahweh Shai. It right, said, so, so, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years so that's how you know when the cycle it's like a clock the, the 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 lights in the heavens are a clock and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so now Elohim made two great lights a greater light to rule the day and a lesser light to rule the night the sun and the moon we don't we shouldn't have trouble with that he made the stars also and Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So the, the new day starts at evening, okay? At the evening and when it starts, okay? Not at midnight, you know? According to the clock or whatever they set up, it's that evening. That's when the sun goes when the sun goes down, and is when you notice the new day has begun. Okay, that's how that's set up. Now, let's go to Sirach. Sirach forty three. Start up, but I want to I want to actually go down. And it um, matter of fact, I'll read through it. Uh, the pride of the height. The clear firmament, the beauty of heaven, with his glorious show, the sun when it appeareth, declareth at its at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the Most High. Okay, when he did created the Most High created that, the idea of of of, of the sun. Okay, and Allah put it together. It says, at noon it parched the country, and who can abide the burning heat thereof? All right, uh, a man blowing a furnace is in works of heat, but the sun burneth the mountains three times more. There's nothing that, that we know of on earth that's as hotter than the sun. Now they measure that and they got like the nuclear weapons now and, and you know, through science and, and, you know, really from the power of the Heavenly Father had them put the spirit on to create that type of thing. Anyway, it says, uh, breathing out fiery vapors and sending forth bright beams it dimmeth the eyes, okay? Great is the Lord Yahweh that made it, and at his commandment runneth hastily. Okay, it shows you how the how the how the sun works, right? It said the greater and lesser light. Six. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. Okay, so it's basically a calendar. Okay, and a sign of the world. Meaning he's gonna show certain blood moons and all of that in, in with the moons. Eclipses. Okay. The moon is a sign of feasts, right? A light that decreases in her perfection. When a moon is perfect, it's a new moon. You can't see it. The light of it has completely decreased through the moon phases. It says from waxing where it grows into a, the full moon light to waning when it, it grows from full to uh, to the new moon increasing in darkness it says uh the month is called after her name and moon and month are synonymous okay with the same words a light that decreases in her perfection it said the moon the month is called after her name increasing wonderfully in her changing being an instrument of the armies above shining in the firmament of heaven an instrument of the armies of things that the most high set up to do a certain job in the heavens man Okay, the beauty of heaven, the glory of the stars, and ornament giving light in the highest places of the Lord. At the commandment of the Holy One, they will stand in their order and never faint in their watches. Okay, and it goes on to rainbows and so other, so forth other things, right? So it, but the point I want to get there is a declaration of times, 
serving the seasons, okay, uh, a sign of feats, okay, so we can know the time of year, the time of day, okay, the time of the week, the time of the month, okay, by the moon. Now let's go to Leviticus 23, start at the top, but it, verse 2 says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. These are my feasts. Verse 3, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest. The word Sabbath or Shabbat means rest. And in, in the Hebrew, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It shall be a Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Okay, these are the feasts of the Lord, even the holy convocations which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. And I'll read this one because they're going to show you how to read when the Passover is coming over, saying that this is the month of that. It says, in the 14th day in the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So as I showed you, uh, let me pull it up. Uh, yeah, as I showed you in this, 14 days after the new moon will be the full moon, which is when the Passover comes in. Okay. All right. You see it? That's when it'll be. All right. Um, yep. On the, yeah, the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day, of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread. So the day after the Passover, now we get the leaven out of the house on uh, prior to the Passover, but the, the next day you start the feast of unleavened bread, meaning for, for as I was going to say, uh, feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days must ye eat unleavened bread. So seven days from the 15th day, you eat unleavened bread. Okay, whether that's that's basically bread that didn't have time to rise. And you can go into uh, Exodus, the, the 12th chapter, to go deeper into that. Okay? All right? And it shows you, as a matter of fact, let me go to Exodus 10, I mean, uh, Exodus 20. And it'll break it down a bit there. Let me see. I'll even start at verse 2. It says, I am the Lord Yahweh that... Thy power which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And the Passover was that that event, you know, with the death of all the firstborns in Egypt, is when um when when we came out of Egypt. Okay, when the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread began. Okay, so let me jump down to verse uh, eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, so meaning you don't want to be defiled on this day, on any Sabbath, okay? Meaning, that means there's no sex on the Sabbath, man. That was a topic that came up recently. That's, that's you're now unclean and defiled, okay? And, and those are the same things, okay? <clears throat> anyway, it says, six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy power, in it thou shalt do not do any work, thou, nor thy sons, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, everybody got a chill, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is in within thy gates. For six for in six days the Lord Yahweh made heaven and earth, and which was through the Alahim he had it done, heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord Yahweh blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. Okay, how do we know? We we saw that in Genesis, the first chapter. Let's go down toward the end of the chapter. Um, he makes man, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's what we needed. Yeah, verse, second chapter. It says, uh, thus the, uh, Genesis chapter two, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them, everything that creates the earth in its in its in its creation, okay, and all of its workings. And on the seventh day the most high or the Alahim ended his work, ended the work of the uh, the blueprint of, of the most high Yahweh, 
which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Now I am blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it that in it he had rested from all his work which the Elohim created and made. Okay. All right. All right. So that's what the, and I'll read for and all these are are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh power made the earth and the heavens. And I just want to make a quick point about that. Say I'm an architect and I design a building. Okay, I, I write up the blueprint and then I hire a uh, contracting company and, and they, they get everything. They bring all the cement and the construction company. They've all put together. Who, who made that building? I still made it. The architect is still the one that made it. Even though he didn't physically lay one brick down, he didn't physically, um, you know, smooth out concrete or, or, or hammer one nail into any wood. He still created it because he was the architect. He laid the blueprint of it. Okay, he had it done. Same, same deal. All right. So let's not go too, too far into that for you guys. All right. But it's, it's reiterating that you rest on that seventh day. And how do you read that? We just showed it. Okay. So let's go back to the image. All right, shows you right there. Okay, the new moon is a Sabbath. And then seven days after that day, you count seven again, and it brings you right back. Okay, so it wouldn't be the 10th. It'd be the, the evening of the 9th. Okay, and because they're counting that way, they're off a day every time they count another week. These are all going to land on Wednesday Um the ninth, the evening of the ninth, Wednesday, the evening of the 16th, Wednesday, the evening of the 23rd. Okay. And then it'll move because as we showed, uh, in this it's 29 and a half days until the next new moon. Okay. All right. And see it, it wasn't quite there cause the new moon hadn't fully come in. Um, when I took this picture, it was just about there. All right. So you guys have to watch this, uh, the signs of the heavens, man. And this, and we're, we're rehearsing the righteous acts. We're not, we're just practicing. This isn't about perfection right now, but acknowledging what we're uh, supposed to be doing. So I'm going to leave this here. You know, this pretty much just shows you how to read, uh, the Sabbath. You know, uh, so you look for the new moon, which is when you don't see a moon in the sky. And then you count seven days after that it should be back on that same day. And you started at the evening of the previous day or the day after, depending on when the Sabbath, when the new moon comes in. OK, came in today. All right. So at evening is when when you began it. And then it'll be seven days. Then it'll skip a day or it'll be the, a, a double Sabbath next month. According to this calendar, it'll be a double Sabbath. Next month, we we skip uh, yesterday. All right, and it's twenty nine point five three. If you want to get, you know, even deeper, and there's even numbers after that, a hundredth that add up. Okay, but that that pretty much is is to to try to keep it simple. If you all, if you're only keeping it Friday uh, uh, to Saturday, Saturday, Friday sundown or Saturday sundown, hey, at least you're keeping that. You know. I mean, we're not going to just condemn you for keeping the Sabbath wrong, but we do instruct, especially here at Great Millstone, you guys take us correcting you on how to read the Sabbath as condemning you about when you keep the Sabbath. No, we're really just trying to correct you on how to read it. But if, if you can only keep it certain times and you don't want to put the effort, okay, that's on you. You got to work that out with the Heavenly Father. But we are here to show you how to do these things according to the scriptures. And I just showed you that. So, Lord, one of this was edifying, giving all praises and glories unto you. How will Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Akakadash, Harachakwadash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, and greetings, salutations, and blessings unto you, like up there, until the next one, Shalom.